I found another piece of art. So story time, my salad versus clan boss. So we're gonna go take him into the clan boss. We're gonna see how he does just by himself because that's what this piece of art is indicating. And then I wanted to go ahead and take him into Hydra. We're gonna go against Hydra normal and uh, we'll see what my salad does. By the way, his name is my salad or it actually was. Now we're gonna put respect on his name. It's Masha Led. Before, people were calling him My Salad because he was a pretty shit champion. But now he's doing pretty well. He's probably one of the uh, harder nukers now with a lot of application in Arena, the dungeons, and of course in Hydra. For specific comps and killable comps, he's a great damage dealer as well as a, a speed up booster for unkillable comps. But today we're gonna go ahead and dive into the kit as well as the masteries that I currently have for him, the gear, and uh, pretty much everything else. So specific pieces of gear, we're looking for crit damage, crit rate, attack, and uh, we're going for speed. There's a lot of room for improvement here in terms of oiling all the way up and getting better enchantments, as well as re-rolling some of these ascensions. For example, uh, I don't want really. I, don't, I really don't want defense. I'm, I'm not against having extra defense, but I think I would do better with something like I don't know, uh, accuracy or attack. May, or maybe that's good. You let me know. Attack. I would prefer to. Um, I would prefer to have attack percent. Attack here. Uh, attack is good there and there. And of course, we want to make sure we're getting glyphs on our speed. We want to make sure he's going fast. But the thing is, because of his eight two which places increased speed and increased damage. We're not too worried about making sure he's built in the standard way that I normally would build him. He does have um, this uh, these buffs here, which increase it by 30%. So 30% increase to speed, that's his total speed, and increase crit damage as well, means that when it comes to stats, we don't have to worry too much if we're still in the learning process and still if we're still in the process of building up our gear it's okay to have him at 205 and uh barely 250 crit damage he's rocking 4.6 k attack and um you know if, if it were up to me i'd have him at at least 5k attack at least 220 and at least 250 crit damage obviously more is better we do want to make sure we're placing the debuffs so we're going to go ahead and throw some accuracy on him. Because he does place buffs on himself and the entire crew, wanted to make sure that we're getting some res on him as well so that we're not dying. He is going to be squishy. It's important that we have a stabilizing synergy with our other teammates within our clan. Uh, going, uh, going against Hydra specifically, going up against Hydra. So when it comes to his A1, attacks one enemy, Heals this champion by 30% of the damage like a true vampire. Will then attack enemies under leech. This hits pretty hard and it's cool because this move will actually function in the same way that Scorid, the half spawn, this current fusion, functions with one of his moves where he attacks one enemy, then attacks other enemies that have hex. It's the same thing here, functions like Mashalet here. He places increased speed and increased crit damage on all allies for two turns, then places a true fear. This does not apply to bosses and then a leech, which does apply, apply to bosses and then grants himself an extra turn, which is really cool because this extra turn mechanic essentially means that it's going down to a, let's see, books down to three turns, two turn cooldown. Then uh, we can go ahead and roll into our attack. This is gonna help us move faster and hit harder. His A2, or sorry, his A3 actually hits pretty hard as well. 80% chance of stealing all buffs before attacking. Places heal reduction. Places two continuous heals on this champion for three turns. And then damage increases by 50% against targets that have no buff. Note that he is not booked. I currently don't have enough books for him. This is on an account where I just don't have that steady income. Or that, that steady stream of, of, uh, of books. And I pretty much use all my books for other champions. Uh, that I've been working on building so far. And also, if you're wondering why my Mashaled isn't as great as I normally would have my nukers, it's just because the gear here is not where I would like it to be yet. It's uh, it's still a work in progress. If I had a blessing on him, I'd probably go for, I don't know, something like... I, it kind of just depends on the on the level of blessing that you have. Like, if you have a 6-star blessing for Mashaled, I'd definitely go with Crushing Rend. 
because that's going to allow you to ignore a percentage of the target's defense. Ignores 1% of defense for every 10 levels every single time, as opposed to if you only had a one to five star, you're only ignoring defense every first two hits. After that, it disappears. Another option is always Brimstone. You could always go with Brimstone. You could also do Soul Reap. Most of a, a lot, or not most of, but a lot of damage dealers I've seen or I've used will use Soul Reap. And then you could also use Cruelty, which is going to decrease the defense of a target. And then depending on the level, up to 5%, 10%, and then 15%, and then 20% for bosses. And over the long time, that is going to help you do more damage. Obviously, 20% less um, damage that you, or less defense that you have to worry about is going to do you very well. When it comes to actually, what about Heaven Cast? Because he will increase the damage that he does according to the number of buffs on him, and he already places two here, and then he gives himself two right here as well. So I guess sometimes he would hit pretty hard with Heaven Cast. I don't know. Phantom Touch might be a good one early on too if you have nothing else. As always, do not blindly copy masteries, but go ahead and blindly copy these masteries taking Helm Smasher. So you might be wondering why we're taking Helm Smasher. It's because... How should I explain this? Helm Smasher does not have a cap to damage, whereas War Master does. It's 4% of the target's max HP. Helm Smasher does not have a cap. Same thing with Giant Slayer, where it's only 3% of the max HP. So as you're approaching end game or late game, or once you get to a certain point where you can build your champions to do like optimal max damage, you're gonna wanna start going for Helm Smasher. This is not fact, this is more of like, I don't wanna call it an opinion, but this is more of the mindset that I've currently been uh, receiving from a lot of players who are ahead of me, as well as those around me. Uh, a lot of them are saying Helm Smasher is the way to go now, but this is more for like an end game mindset. So keep that in mind. If you're looking to build Masha Lead for clan boss or something, you might want to just go ahead and take War Master. Taking crit right here, crit damage. We're taking Life Drinker to heal a little bit more. And then we're gonna we're gonna do single out for increased increased damage. As well as bring it down to increased damage for those who are going up against that have more HP. Methodical to increase damage for his A1. That's his default skill, up to 10% across the battle. And then kill streak. This is not really going to apply for any of the bosses, but you can get up to extra 12% damage based on who he kills, and he does kill, and like I said, he does well in the dungeons. Taking extra resistance, extra value of healing that he receives. I think this also works for his buff for continuous heals. And we're taking improved parry. When it comes to improved parry versus blast proof, decreases damage received from AoEs versus decreased damage by 8% whenever he's hit with a crit hit. A lot of the times in the dungeons when you're going up against, or not even just in dungeons, against bosses, it's the crit hit. The critical damage is the one that's going to kill you. And if you can mitigate that, as opposed to just 5% here from whether it's a weak or normal hit, I think that this is where it's going to matter more. This is going to help you survive a lot more. Like the value that you get, the mitigation is a lot more when it comes to uh, receiving a critical hit. Chance to remove a random debuff from a champion whenever it loses HP, so we definitely want to take that. Because I do plan to use him in Hydra in one of my teams here pretty soon that I'm going to showcase. Increases ally res by 5 for each buff placed on them by this champion. He does place 2 buffs on the entire team. It's always nice to increase their res as well. Damage mitigation up to 6% over the longevity of a fight. And counterattack with retribution, we have a chance to do that. So let's go ahead and take him straight in to the clan boss. Now, the story goes, Masha led versus clan boss, right? So we're going to go ahead and because it's just going to be him by himself, we're going to go ahead and just do Masha led by himself against normal. I'm not going to do quick battle just yet. I'm going to go ahead and throw this in to clan boss just like this. And we're going to see what he's doing. He's okay. 167. We're doing 70k there. 59k. The A3 is hitting pretty hard, 166. And again, this is without books. This is without like maximizing everything that I possibly could on him uh, with okay gear. I would say this gear, gear is okay. It's not anywhere um, near the gear that I have on my main or my main alt account. 
So it looks like the A1's hitting for close to 70. The A3 is hitting for about 170, I think. Yeah, 174, that's with the increased crit damage. I want to see what the damage is like without his A3. Because what he's been doing is he's been putting the buffs up and then using his A3. But I want to see what he looks like if he doesn't use his A3 with this increased crit damage. We're looking at 64. Okay, so maybe not. 185 there? Yeah, so against normal, it looks like you know the story's panning out pretty well. I don't know if he's going to be able to do 19 million all by himself. He's at 3 million barely just right now. And it looks like it's progressively getting harder and harder for him to stay alive. He only has like, what, 30, 40k HP? I just took 10 not too long ago. Now he's hitting pretty hard. You can see that bar ticking down. It's just like the story. Just like the story was foretold. Masha led my salad versus the clan boss. Okay, 71 right there. Got the leech. Got a lot of heals going on. Able to keep him alive like that. But this move right here is hitting him really hard. And then it's stunning him. It's There's no way. There's no way we make it past round 30. Turn 30, we're, before turn 30, we're dead. We're, it's, it's not happening. I think he's going to die in like the next two moves. Two boss turns, I mean. Okay, that's one boss turn. Let's see. There it is. Oh, okay, no, he survived a little bit longer. This one. Yep, there it is, 39. Okay, so there it is. 6.27 by himself without any of the, the best things that we could possibly do for him. So that's that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and take him into Hydra. I got one key left and we're looking at this team right here for normal. And I'm going to go ahead and hit run. I will talk you guys through this as I go through it. We're going to increase attack. We have Arbiter here for increased speed, increased attack, as well as turn meter boost and a little bit of healing. Razzlevark in the lead for his 20% aura lead. Then we're going to place the increase speed, increase accuracy. And we're going to have, um, what do you call it? Husk here. Because Husk has an A1 that places Provoke. So if we can get lucky enough, we can make sure we're always keeping Provoke up on this head, the head of Decay. Then we're going to go ahead and looks like we have block buffs up on everybody because Uko or Ugo did his thing. We're going to hit the A2 on this and now we're going to place our buffs. And watch this right here. I'm going to slow it down so you guys can see it. Masha Led is going to hit one enemy. Then it's going to spread the damage. we got 66, 65, 60 something over there, I think. Turn meter boost with Arbiter. Then we're going to just hit the A1 right here. Let's speed up again. And then we also have a Leech coming out of Razzlevarg. Now, Husk's A2 is an enemy max HP move. So we're going to see how much this does. And we're looking 84, 137 over here. Let's go ahead and just hit the A1 on this head here. Smog did not apply. Keeping the leech up here. I think this is going to be a pretty solid team. I'm pretty excited for this team to see how much damage is going to be done. Let's go ahead and just throw it on auto here. And we're going to focus down on this head for now. I don't want any cleansing to go on. And the provoke did not land. The provoke did not land, which means the... Um, he's gonna, what do you call it? What do you call it? Uh, he's gonna cleanse. He's gonna cleanse. So we're gonna take that off here. And we're gonna hit this. So, one, okay, so because the leech wasn't applied on all of these heads here, we ended up missing it. So let's go ahead and just, okay, so we got provoke again. Husk's provoke is only on 30, 35%, something like that. So we'll, uh, we'll see how far we can get along. Okay, so we actually killed him. That's good. And we're hitting, oh, that's a weak. We're hitting weak on that head. It's really nice having Masha Led here because it's kind of like an AOE. Even though we can't really target this head here, we know that every time Masha Led goes, we're gonna be able to hit him. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna, let's see how much damage I do against this head here. With Masha Led, is that? Is he weak or strong against this head? I keep forgetting. Oh, 288. He's hitting for almost 300k on this head here. That's without decreased defense. 
Let me see if I can get Ugo to place place anything here on the headless head here. Oh, looks like it's not going to happen this time around. Let's see. He's strong against the Force Affinity. Okay, so that's good to know. Oh, I should have aimed on this head to get the Provoke up. That's fine. Let's see, we're going to hit this head, hit that head. Can we get the provoke up? And we do get the provoke up, that's that's good. Now this head of fear is gonna mess us up, I think, because we don't have Inquisitor Shamael to uh, keep us going. We're gonna place block buffs, so we don't have to worry about his smog going up. I really wanna get rid of this head, but this head is kinda tanky, so it's kinda hard to to really gauge the damage out, but let's just throw it on auto here. And we'll see. Ugo is also plus four, so this Ugo is doing pretty well in terms of the heals and the block buffs. Just a true epic in its literal sense. We have the decreased defense thanks to Ugo. So if you're wondering who to put in your clan boss team, Ugo is definitely one of the ones you want to try putting out. It's a uh, Ugo, Geomancer, Husk, Royal Guard is a really good one. Uh, I feel like I I had somebody in my mind that I wanted to mention that's an epic, but it wasn't coming into my head. I forgot. Oh, Inquisitor Shamael, of course. Yeah. So this team is going to go on for a while. I'm going to see uh, how far it goes, and I'll get back right at, right at you. All right, and check this out. Mashala did 20 million point five by himself, and then Sun Wukong followed behind. Um, yeah. So, one of these days, I'm going to get Mashaled a lot stronger. And look at this. Husk did uh, almost 10 million by himself with Razzlevarg actually putting in work. Actually, I might change Husk out now that I'm seeing this. Husk isn't exactly built out in the best um, gear so far. And I'm surprised Razzlevarg actually did a lot. Almost, he came in third place in terms of damage. Of course, Sun Wukong is a king, so he does what he does, but... Yeah, Marshall led in the lead. Definitely uh, gonna refine this team here. But if you have any suggestions, let me know.